all boys, when they left school, joined the territorials. Right. It was sort of the thing to do. Like we had the drill hall. Uh, we had the drill hall in Kirby, and everybody went to the drill hall because that's where you practice drill. Uh, uh, what happened in the after the Boer War? When yeah, of course, because it wasn't that long ago. Was no, it? They, they had to learn how to shoot, and that was a crack shot, apparently. Was it? As were his brothers, because they were good porchers. <laughs> And how old was he when he left school? Thirteen, because they needed the money, so he was sent as an, an, a, an apprentice blacksmith to Underley, because my grandfather said a blacksmith was never out of work, and they needed his half-crown a week to live on. Mm. And he was there until war was declared. At the beginning of war, Dad was attached to the... Well, it must have been before the war, he joined the Yeomanry, which used to meet up at Lowther, Lowther, Cumberland Westman Yeomanry. That's a great picture. That was where uh, that was that was when they joined up. So is your dad I think doing I, th there? I think he's that one, looking at them all. What your dad? Yes, I think that's dad. But he was also a very good runner. He used to run at places like Grasmere, and the day war broke out, he was running races at Kendal. He won his races. And never got the money. <laughs> Because his, <laughs> young, his younger brother came and said, John, you called up, war is declared. And he left the, the field and went. Oh, gosh. And how As, old was he then? I think he was 19. Right. It might have been 20. And a whole lot went from Kirby. So did he have Ooh. to go so early because well, he was yes. in the TA? Yes, that, yes, yes. They were called up that day. Oh, nice. They were called up the day war was declared. I mean, first of all, they moved all around England having training and then they went to France and it was in France for, I think, the rest of the war. And Mr Wilman from the Royal Hotel used to lend my father a black horse. It was always the same black horse. And Dad was very good with horses. For instance, when war was declared and he went to France, there was very one very good horse the one that we call 245, that nobody else could manage. <sighs> My father had a way with horses. I think these days you would have called him a horse whisperer. And they were going to, I think, shoot it. And Dad said, please, can I have that horse? And because he could control it and loved it, he said yes. Oh, so he actually got an officer's horse. Um, the 4th Border Regiment, just before they go on sale for India. Oh, right. That's, um, That's in Queen Square, um, opposite the church. Near, um, near the entrance to the Methodist Church. Oh, that yes. Street. Yeah, OK, got it. That was where they usually assembled. Both his sisters were nurses, I think, at Underley, because they'd have to walk there from Biggins, which is three miles, yeah, they would. there and back. Good shoes. Yes. She was very young. <laughs> That's Alice. 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 Wilson. Yes. And that is Annie. And that is a photograph, I think, of a Christmas party at Underley. Hmm. So who were all of these at the, at the beginning? Well, I don't know they who just... they were. They were all his colleagues and friends. But he hasn't put names on the back. At least I don't think he did. I had them all out on one occasion. No, yeah. you see, he didn't. They would mean something to him. To him, yeah. And if I'd known it, he had them. I would have... I see, I don't know who they are. You'd have asked him. I'd have asked I him. I would have, I would have made him Tell write names you. on. Yeah. Oh, this is when he gets his bicycle. Oh, it must have been, yes. <laughs> or if they didn't like the bicycles. Oh, I can imagine, not after a nice horse. No. no. You can talk to horses and give them a cuddle. Yeomanry tug-of-war champions. Well, that wouldn't be Dad. He was too slight. <laughs> no, they're the big boys. It was my build. <laughs> For a blacksmith, I ask you. I, yeah. Oh, oh. oh, that was a that was a concert party. That's Dad. It was some sort of entertainment that, that he put on for the troops, <laughs> and he he got involved. That's the one with the names on, isn't it? H Noble. John oh, T. yes. H Nobles came from Kendall. Hayward. Panson, Alan Rhodes, Jackson. Somebody Jackson. But I think it would be Wilfred who was 
Wob's only son. Oh, you said he lost. Yeah, you said he lost his son, didn't you? And he, it, that was the, it just about broke Wob's heart. To who was Wob's? What was his name? Warburton. Warburton. Yes. So Sergeant Wilfred H. Jackson, Honourable Artillery Corp. Th yes, that, that would be there. Wilf. And yeah. apparently he was a brilliant violinist and his father took his violin up to the attic and nobody ever saw it again. Didn't let anybody see it. And he's so pathetically young. And the traps is my age. No, they are. Even for me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they look very young. Somewhere among all these documents, there is one that gave him, gave him permission come to come on. and leave. But I don't think he came home very often. Mm. Well, they didn't. It was a question of shipping. Must have been that. Which was needed for food and yeah. other things, of course. When the Westmoreland and Cumberland Yeomanry disbanded, he was sent to the Scots Greys and he was in the retreat somewhere on the Somme with the Scots Greys and we didn't know he'd been wounded till we found the wound marks on his back when he was actually dying because he never talked about it. You know Dad was a friend of the Reverend Hardly, Hardy. I didn't know. <clears throat> he was his scoutmaster. Oh, and he used to stay he used to stay with them up at Hutton Roof. And um when he heard that the Reverend Hardy had been wounded, he got permission from his commanding officer to go and visit him. And as he arrived there, he was met by, funnily enough, a nurse from Hutton Roof, a girl he knew, who said, John, you're just too late. He's died. She knew why he'd gone. And he was the only non-commissioned officer at the Reverend Hardy's funeral about a week before the war ended and my father said he should have had a, a VC for breakfast every morning. Really? Mm, he was such a brave man. Yes, uh, my father came back as a blacksmith. Not quite. Oh, my, one of his brothers came home and was a, a mounted policeman. Oh, wow. Poor 245 was on a ship coming back to England when the ship was torpedoed or the bond and I'm afraid poor 245 went down with the rest of them. Oh, which I think brought my father's heart. Oh. He kept the saddle and a lot of the accoutrements, which he shouldn't really have had, but they've all finished up in Dale, Maine, which is the museum for the Cumberland and Westmoreland Yeomanry. Ah. In fact, any that came back all stayed in close contact. They met, well, they'd go up to Dale, Maine. They'd all meet up there. Oh, about a dozen of them used to meet every year, one place or another. They all, all remained friends until the day they all died. They, they were, you know, they were very close. You'd have it was to. a real brotherhood. And you don't mention Germany or Germans to no. my father. No, I can imagine. He used to have the screaming hab-dabs, but he wouldn't tell us why. And it wasn't actually till he was dying that we found out, because he was walking over the bodies of his dead friends on the battlefield and um, he was very upset about that. We had a vicar who said, oh, what do we have a memorial service for? We're not going to have that anymore in Kirby. And Dad said, you jolly well will. Every man on that war memorial was my friend. Everyone, First and Second World War, you jolly well will. And you see, all these boys say from Crestbrook, from QES, which was boarding school, that he taught to ride. They were his friends. I think he, on, on some occasions, he read the names and he always read the bit about Binion at the end. Why do you think people still want to remember and should we remember? To stop another war. But it didn't, did it? It didn't. I mean, we, it, it was supposed to be the war to end wars. And it was so awful that I think they, if they point out the horrors of it, they hope that if they point out the evils of war that it won't happen again.